Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for yeah, it's a special edition of the show. We're just gonna do one wine today. Now, uh, I was supposed to record this a couple weeks ago so I could have it released on Monday, but man, the way the way the, uh, outside of the show, life worked. Wasn't able to record till Wednesday. Today's the 29th of July. So I'm still in time for what's uh, called Alborino Day. Now this is, in 2015, this is on Saturday, August 1st, so, um, I'll have, this, I'll have this video up either tonight or first thing in the morning on Thursday. So there'll be enough time for people to kind of see what Alberino Day is and then go and get your bottle of Alberino so you can drink Alberino on Saturday the 1st. So what's Alberino Day? Well, um, so you may have heard of Cabernet Day, you may have heard of uh, uh, Merlot, Me, and all those things. So Alberino Day uh, has been going on for, I think, now four years. And... Um, uh, because of that, uh, I guess, you know, they're doing the same thing other people are doing. You know, just get, I hate to use the phrase raise, raise awareness because it sounds, doesn't quite sound right for, for a wine, but to just kind of promote, it's a better way of saying it, to promote the Albarino grape. Um, it start, it's, it's in the first week of August to correspond with a, uh, with a festival in Rias Baixas, and that's how you pronounce it, uh, Rias Baixas. Um, Anyway, uh, so in Rio Spicious, this is the main area where the Alberino grape is grown. It's also grown in Portugal, and instead of the B, it's a V, and a couple of different you know, variations of spelling, but it's Alvarino um, instead of Alberino, all right? So, and I'm sure they sound pretty much the same if somebody was speaking the Portuguese word and someone was speaking the, the Spanish word to me, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference uh, because the B's and the V's are very similar, okay, uh, in, in how you hear them. Anyway, um, so uh, the Albarino grape is, uh, according to Wikipedia, and it's no citation, um, presumably brought to Iberia, which the Iberian Peninsula is Spain and Portugal, uh, by Cluny monks in the 12th century. It's named Alba Rino. Uh, means white wine from the Rhine, or white from Rhine. Um, so I, I'm guessing this is just something somebody just assumed or they heard someone tell them. Um, but it's, it's been grown in the area for a very long time. It uh, supposedly is thought as being a clone of Riesling, um, originating from the Alsace region. Uh, anyway... So, and though they say that there's no known records of Riesling being mentioned until the 15th century rather than the 12th century. So basically, we'll just say it's an indigenous grape to Spain and Portugal for the purposes of this podcast, this show, and um, we'll go from there. Now, how did I get this wine? So, um, let me get rid of that. Um, then I was going to go into the Tapas Society here. So the Tapas Society, this is the Tempranillo Advocates, Producers, and Amigos Society. Um, so it was inspired by the Albarino Wine Festival held in the small coastal town of Cambados, Spain uh, during the first week of August. So, um, uh, and Rio Spices is in a wine region uh, in... Galicia, uh, Galicia, I'm sorry, Galicia, or Galicia. Can't remember, I went to the Wikipedia to find the pronunciation of it, and I don't remember which one. By the way, um, if you have an iPhone, and uh, you want to do something like that with Wikipedia, and get these pronunciations, I highly suggest O Player. Um, it's a media player. It will play the OGG waveform 
Um, you're not gonna be able to play it in iTunes. It's funny because it actually said, would you like to open an iMovie? I went, sure, let's see if it works. It doesn't, but I already have O Player. I have O Player Lite. And it's one of those things where it's like VLC for the iPhone. It plays everything, video, audio, whatever you want. So I highly suggest it. I hadn't used the app in probably two years, but um, everything's good with that. Uh, so anyway, so that's how I got, that's, that's what Alberino Day is and where it came from. Uh, now I got this from uh, Jenica Osi from Cobrand, uh, the, the importers uh, of this, this wine. Now this particular wine we have is the Bodega Don Oligadio. Uh, this is the 2014, and we're gonna try to get, zoom in a little bit on that. Uh, 2014 Albarino, Albarino, this is a 100% Albarino wine. Um, and uh, um, it retails for about $19.99 uh, from what uh, Jessica's information came from me. So, you know, healthy little pour. So I'm sitting on the couch. You know, I, I was gonna, you know, do the whole usual background green screen, all that stuff. But I'm like, no, you know what? I shouldn't really sit back too much because the exposure is really set for me sitting here. Um, and the grill's out there, so it's putting a nice bright <clears throat> right there. And then it's gonna blind the, uh, then, then the dome's gonna blind the, uh, the camera. Anyway, um, I was like, no, you know, let's open the windows, let some light in. I wasn't thought about doing it outside, but I'm pretty sure right now it's close to uh, 95 degrees outside and it's only 1.30 in the afternoon. So I, I kind of went, no way. Uh, 93, pretty darn close. 93 degrees um, where I'm located. Actually, yeah, 93 degrees. So, um, yeah, that's not happening outside. Plus, you know, out in the backyard, we have the bees and the wasps and the mud daubers love to have little nests hiding. So, you know, try to find them and, and spray them and kill them and all that. But saw one of them already today because I had to go outside. I'm like, Nope, I don't need a repeat of wine and, wines and wasps don't mix. That was a fun episode. By the way, if you've never seen it, you should go back and see it. I think it's like, I don't know, episode 253 or 256 or two, I don't know. It's, it's a long time ago now. Um, but um, it's the, in, in the intro on the clips, it's, it's the clip where I'm standing behind, I'm outside at the coast down in Rockport and I'm standing up and I do this. And right before I do that, you see the bee, you see the wasp fly across the screen. So anyway, I reference that, I reference that show a lot. So anyway, uh, white wine from Spain, Galicia or Galicia. Uh, I think it's Galicia. Um, about 20 bucks for this bottle. Now I've had Albarinos before on, on the show, so I'm real excited about that. Um, before we get into the wine, real quick, um, when I was opening the wine, the cork was about, I don't know, just, just a, a few millimeters pushed out. That usually is a concern um, because the, the bottle may have gotten heated and at some point in time after it left the winery, whether it was during the transport over the United States, somewhere in a warehouse or when it was transported over here, but the, 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 it was pushed up a little bit. Um, I smelled the wine before I, before, you know, I, I left it in the bottle, but I smelled the bottle. It didn't smell bad. So there is a possibility that the wine got heat damaged before it got to me. Disclaimer before I start trying it and then all of a sudden I go, it sucks. All right. So let's get into the wine. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I wanted to let in the light and it's summer and instead of being all serious with, you know, the green screen. All right. So. So on the nose, um, you know, white flowers, and, and you know I don't really, I don't really talk about floral too much, but I get that generic white flower-ish feeling from from it. Um, uh, uh, light fruits, melons, peaches, yeah, peaches, nectarine, probably more than melon, but maybe a little cantaloupe rind. I know you're out there going, how in the world do you smell all that? Well, you know, this is not like, it, it, a lot of times when I say I smell something, it's like hints. It's like, it, it makes me think of those things. It's not like I literally smell peaches and nectarines and cantaloupe brine, but 
it's like being around that in a produce section and you're like, okay, well, I'm near the cantaloupes and, I, and I'm, so I'm smelling the cantaloupe rind, not the cantaloupes, okay, because they didn't have them cut. Um, peaches and nectarines, you know, just, just being in that part of, the, part of the grocery store or the produce section or the farmer's market or whatever. So that's, that's the essence of this wine, what I'm getting. It's like the fresh fruit, not, the, not that I um, bit into it. I'm tasting peach and nectarine and cantaloupe. Um, let's see here. And of course, it, it's afternoon and people are sending me messages and all that. I was trying to prevent that, but... I guess airplane mode and Wi-Fi still allows text messages to come through because it's um, uh, the iPhone has the iMessage thing going. No spitting today. First of all, the thumb up was the wine's fine. Nothing wrong with it. It wasn't damaged. So maybe it was just how it was bottled. Um, it's just that normally you don't see the cork pushed up a little bit or not all the way in. Let's, have, let's put it that way. Maybe they didn't put the cork all the way in on that particular bottle. Um, on the palate, really refreshing. Um, not, it's not too terribly crisp. It's actually a little bit of creaminess to it. Um, but there's decent acid. I would say probably a medium acid, maybe medium plus, but it's really good on the acid. It's not, it's not super crisp acidic like a Sauvignon Blanc can be, uh, some other wines, but my mouth is watering, so that tells me we got some good acid. It's just that it's, it's, it's um, slightly creamy, if, if that's a good way to put it for this wine. Um, so it's not, it's not just razor sharp on the tongue. Uh, Fruit-wise, it's, it's kind of tropical fruit in nature. Um, it's a delicious wine. It's really good. It's twenty bucks, so it's 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 fairly priced for for a white wine or an Albarino. Um, you know, you can find Albarinos for cheaper. You can find some probably for a little more money. Um, the Albarinos I have bought in the past have probably have been close to this twenty dollars range, maybe a little bit less. I think I had one that I bought. That was more expensive. I think it was close to like twenty-five dollars. I think that was the one that was that they age on the sea bottom for a while. Um, excuse me. That was that was a really cool one. I'm sorry, I do that on camera sometimes. Anyway, um, uh, it's a good wine, and I would definitely suggest getting it. Um, now, real quick, I, I meant to because uh, I looked up I looked up the producer. Man, I really. I get why these websites have age verifications that really are stupid because anybody can put whatever on there. There's no way to verify your age, but they are annoying. I'm sorry. Uh, and they're doing it voluntarily because I asked, I asked a few people, why do you do this? And they said, we do it voluntarily because we're afraid the government's going to make us do it. Okay. For alcohol. All right. So anyway, so the Don Oligario uh, Bodega, um, let's see, they have, uh, so they have a 12.4 acre single vineyard and has 30 year old, um, I don't know what per, pergola trained vines are, so it's, I'm, it's how the vines are grown, um, in sandy and granite soils with good drainage and east and west exposures. Uh, they also have indigenous herbs are planted among the vines for favorable drainage in the area's wet conditions. Um, they use sustainable wine growing and use organic compost. Leaf, leaf and crop thinning are employed when necessary. The, the grapes are hand harvested and undergo, undergo a cold maceration before fermentation in stainless steel vats at controlled temperatures. So, um, you know, basically looks like they're practicing good winemaking uh, and they're trying to be sustainable or organic when possible, but it, you know, they're not being, 
I, it sounds like not being strict because otherwise they'd probably say certifiable biodynamic or organic or something like that. Though I don't know in Spain if they have certifications or not, or if there's an EU certification that they, they could try to get. But it's a good wine and I would highly suggest, this particular wine is good. If you find it in the stores, I'm assuming this is somewhat widely available. Um, Co-brand, you know, they bring in some good wines. Uh, they bring in wines that are, they don't, they're, I mean, I, if they're sending it to me, this is not a little boutique winery that you're only gonna find in, in very few places around the country. Um, so if you see it and you want something really refreshing this weekend, um, absolutely, this is, a, this is a pretty good wine. I definitely recommend it. For sure. Um, all right, so we're gonna do the housekeeping now. So if you're finished watching the review, you can watch, you can be done. But there are some quasi maybe important things happening over the next month or two with the show. Eh, phone call, ignore it. Oh, good. Um, well, well, ignore it. I can always call them back. Anyway, um, so with, uh, with the show, now, what I've done is blip.tv has been my uh, main, um, uh, is, is the player I'm using on the website. And they're, they've been the people I've been using since the beginning to help distribute the show to iTunes, to YouTube, to Roku, to TiVo. All those other ones, they, they don't, other than YouTube, actually no, they don't even distribute to YouTube anymore. Um, they used to distribute to a lot of places for me. Um, but I've always kept them as my main player because there's a revenue of some sort that happens when you watch on the player. Um, I, I'll tell you, I think I've gotten a pittance, basically. And not, it's, not, it's not their fault. It's how many viewers I'm getting. So I'm not complaining about their structure. I mean, it is what it is. And it's, you have to have tons of views in these video platforms, whether it's YouTube or Blip or whatever, to actually make real money. You know, the people that go, oh, I'm gonna go to YouTube and quit my job and I'm gonna make a million dollars. Good luck with that. It, it's, yeah, it happens, but it's very rare that people can actually make millions of dollars. I mean, they might, make, they might be able to eke out a living doing it, but anyway, so, uh, so we got, those of us that are still with Blip got an email saying that Maker Studio, which is the owner of Blip, and they bought them some time ago, uh, is closing down Blip. So that kind of sucks because I now have to go through 336 episodes uh, and change the player to the YouTube player. Now, if I remember correctly, I used to use Viddler as my main player, but I always distributed to Blip. Because uh, I looked at Blip and I my first, my first show on Blip is from May 28th of 2009, which is when I started the show. Actually, my official start date, I think it was the 25th of May or somewhere around there. Um, so, but I've been using Blip as my player for forever, okay? Um, so now I'm gonna have to go through and use YouTube as my main player. So what they did is they send a thing saying, hey, we would like you to, because we're closing Blip, we'd like you to join Maker Gen. Now, Maker Gen is not the same thing as Maker Studio, from what I can tell. So I looked at the um, terms and terms and conditions, as I would suggest anybody do in the content creation industry to make sure you're not getting hosed. And um, I'm a little confused that if I sign up with them, that I might have to exclusively stay with Maker Gen and YouTube as my one only outlet um, to distribute. Now, YouTube in itself is not bad. Matter of fact, most people, that's all they do is use YouTube. Um, it's just weird that most of my views come from outside of YouTube, which, uh, which even now with TiVo making changes to their uh, interface with their uh, newer TiVo boxes, um, I found that my viewership has gone down dramatically because their people were never, people didn't continue to, they didn't continue the subscriptions and so life happens and people go, oh, he must be gone or they don't know or they decided, you know, and I'm done watching the show. Matter of fact, I've got a couple, I got a podcast that I'm, I might actually stop listening to. Well, I have stopped listening to for a while. Um, I love the podcast, but I'm trying to listen to other podcasts right now and get caught up. So they're on the back burner for right now and I'll, I'll resume with them later. I, if I miss some of the podcasts, it's okay. 
But these other podcasts I don't want to miss, like Levy Dalton's I'll Drink to That. That is absolutely uh, required listening, in my opinion, for people in this industry. I mean, it's educational every single episode. So to me, missing an episode, because it's, it's not a topical thing, you should, you should listen to. The other, the other podcast that I've actually been ignoring, Security Now, which is a computer, pro, computer pro, podcast, computer security podcast, is topical, but at the same time informative. So I'll, I'll listen to all those uh, when I'm done with levies. Anyway, um, so TiVo, it's, they made changes, and they've done this before, and I've lost subscribers, and I gained them back. So I'm not sure about that. I go also through iFood.tv. Um, so their website shows my videos. Um, they actually pull from YouTube and they put it on Roku. So my, my problem is that I don't know if all these little things, side deals I got will be in violation of the terms and conditions. So blip, I'll probably send the email out today anyway. So blip, I've already asked you guys through Twitter to contact me because your contact page isn't working. Now I know VidCon happened over the weekend, so you might've been busy. So now it's been Tuesday, I haven't heard. So I'll, I, I, I have ways to get email addresses of people and I have email addresses of the higher ups there. So I will email them all and very nicely, and politely say, look, you know, I, I just need to know. That's all I need. I wanna join you. I think you guys can help out and all that. But anyway, so if there's a hiccup somewhere along the line, understand that. Also, next week, I go to TechSum. Uh, that means there won't be any shows getting recorded because um, this is the only show I'm recording today. I'm not going to record anything tomorrow. So there's going to be probably a month gap of shows. Uh, I would have not recorded today, but I did make a commitment to, to, uh, to do this wine. So I'm fulfilling that commitment. And this is good wine. I'm glad I did. So just know there's going to be about three weeks to a month that there won't be any shows. Um, and then I'll come back full force as I typically do in August, I typically have a take the whole month of August off. Maybe type maybe type a um, a thing about my experience at TechSum. You know, last year was was about the competition. This year, uh, you know, I, I'll probably talk about volunteering, which I'm I'm so excited about volunteering, being behind the scenes and what had the benefits of volunteering. I volunteered partially last year, and so I've already already have an insider's look a little bit of it. But this year, I'm going to actually be volunteering during the conference itself rather than pre-conference, which was most of what my, which was almost all of my volunteering last year. Um, plus I'm hoping that I don't have that sciatica or whatever I had last year where my, my hip was killing me from something in my back or whatever. That took like a couple weeks to really clear up, but that week was horrible. I almost, I almost pulled out of the competition because I was in so much pain just from standing. And, and it, it was immediate. It wasn't like your feet hurt when you stand for 10 hours in a shift. It was, you know, five seconds after you stand up and straighten up. Oh, it was horrible. Anyway, so that's housekeeping. Um, as always, I appreciate everybody who watches the show. Um, so expect by the time I get back with the show that the YouTube players will already be up for all the prior episodes. So they will have to start working on that because um, Blip has, I think August 20th is when they close. So I have, I have about three more weeks before I have to convert everything to YouTube player. Um, so expect that, expect me to join them. Even if it's exclusive, maybe I have to try to get an exception with iFood TV because they do pull from YouTube. So it's not like, you know, it's not like they, they're not, it's not like they, I'm giving them the video directly. So, um, but iTunes subscribers, you might have to, you might have to, you know, watch on YouTube. Um, that's, that's my concern. I don't have a ton of iTunes subscribers, but I do have, I do have people that watch on iTunes and it's been a, a, a big, you know, point of pride that I'm the only active video wine show left on iTunes. And I have been for, since Gary left basically, um, other than the guy that was in China, but you couldn't access his stuff in the United States iTunes store. Um, and he's, he has, he stopped producing uh, a couple years ago. So that's been the big point of pride for me is that I'm the only one on iTunes. And so that's why I really need to know these things because I, if I have to give up, give it up because it'll be better for the show then I will. If, if, uh, if they can let me do all the other stuff cause they're like, yeah, 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 whatever, then that'll be great. All right. So that's going to do it. Um, friend me up on the links above, hit the, hit the donate button over there on PayPal, send me a few ducats. 
Leave comments below. I'll have, uh, I'll have some links for the wine and we'll see everyone again next time.